welcome to another edition of our complete journey into Nick's set review. I'm Evan Irwin. I'm Brad Nelson. And we are here talking about all the cool red cards and journey into Nick's. We are going to get started immediately with a crow and line breaker. Don't you mean a crow and line backer? There, he looks like he's backing through and there doing the classic running back pose. I like it. Those are some sweet axes. Seriously, look at those axes. Things are amazing. Yeah, I mean, it is a very flavorful, flavorful card. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to like, you know, you have the line breaker and he's gets through with intimidate and it's cool. I mean, you yeah. know, it's one of those where like as a three mana two one kind of meh, but as long as you can keep targeting him, as long as you can keep bestowing him or whatever, like it gives itself intimidate, which is very powerful. And if you're bestowing a creature onto him, he's already a four one at that point. Oh, for sure. A yeah. four one plus whatever it is you're putting on him. Yeah, for sure. I think I think the card is going to be decent. Uh definitely just like the kind of effect that you just constantly every turn want to set up, like uh, it'll take me three turns to kill my opponent, so I'm only going to use one trick each turn, mm -hmm. uh, and make sure that you just get all the damage out of them. And, and and I think this card will see a lot of limited play. Yeah, it'll see plenty of limited play. It's really good in your red aggressive decks. Um, in your slower decks, it's going to be bad. You know, the slower your deck is, the worse this card is. Oh, for sure. Generally, uh, because this is a card that is made to go on the curve. You want to play this on three. You want to bestow it on four. You want to target it again on five. You know that type of thing. And if you can do that. This guy is an all-star. Oh, for sure. And if you can, he's not much. All right. Next up, Bearer of the Heavens. So much flavor. I, mm. I, I'm actually dis disappointed that I didn't know who this was because the first time I saw it, I thought he was just tearing the heavens open. Right. But he's not holding them. And then I kind of felt ashamed that I should have known better. Come on. Now, for what it's worth, I did look it up this morning. I wanted to make sure that, you know, there were other Theros and or Born of the Gods things that we may not have been aware of, sort of classic Greek yeah. mythology stuff. Now, this is the story of Atlas. And Atlas is carrying the world. And though what I found was that he actually wasn't carrying the earth as we know it. He was carrying uh, Uranus or some other... What was that? Shut up, you <laughs> child. Some other heavenly body that happened. It's, it's, so, it, seems, it seems like pretty difficult to hold your anus up, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, my God. It's, it's a job, it's, am I it's right? It's a job for it's a, a job. It's a total job. It's a, it takes a 10-10. For, for, yeah. All right. But still, one of the cool things about Atlas and, and Atlas's story is that uh, Her one of Hercules' 13 uh, trials that they made him go through uh, was to get some apples from Atlas's garden that was being guarded by Atlas's uh, daughters. And the way that he did that was instead of going to the garden and trying to get through his daughters or, or you know fight them or whatever it was, uh, he went to Atlas himself and said, hey, I will carry this, I will carry this burden, and you go get your apples and come back. And so Atlas went to his home, went to his home farm, got the apples, came back, and then was going to try to trick Hercules into uh, carrying this forever. Because this weight, once you take it and once, you, once you're there and have accepted it, uh, you are going to do that until someone takes it away from you. And yeah. so uh, what Atlas said was, hey, you know, now that I've got these apples, I'll just take them wherever you need them to go so you can complete your quest and he'll leave Hercules there yeah. holding the heavens. And so the way Hercules tricked him was Hercules said, well, uh, that's fine, you know, but before you do that, uh, would you mind if you know you held it just for a second, and I'm going to uh, fix my cloak so I can pad my shoulders so yeah. it doesn't hurt too bad? And yada yada. And Alice was like, "Yeah, sure, no problem." And takes it, and then Hercules is like, "Thanks for the apples, bye." bye. <laughs> like, that's what happens. That's that's your classic story. And I, I spend like all that time on the story because the card's not good and limited or constructed, but it's going to be great and casual. Yeah, that 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 abruptly stopped just like you know hit, uh, Atlas's trickery. But uh, <laughs> I like the story; it seemed kind of cool. It's neat, right? Well, I, I kind of feel like it was pretty dumb of Hercules to originally take it over. Oh, it was real dumb. But yeah. it was also at the same time. Well, Hercules didn't know how to get around Atlas's daughters, as I understand. It. At oh, least that's okay. the word, that was the insinuation was that Atlas, or that Hercules was like the only way I can do this is to get Atlas to do this. What what are these apples possessed? Like why are they so I important? I didn't look. I didn't read that far into it. You know what <laughs> no, I'm saying? I'm going to. I'm going to go look. You go story. and you Wikipedia this and you Wikipedia this and you'll learn something and it'll be sweet. This card, however. Uh, while super sweet and super flavorful, it shouldn't get you there in either format that no. we talk about the most. Blade Test Boar, however, directly from Zendikar. And I'm glad to see it back. I, I love this card then. It's just as cool now. Like It's just a very good card because you think about it, you're like, well, this is just a 3-2 for 4 mana that doesn't fly, but it kind of does. It kind of does. It's sort of like the red uh, Snapping Drake or what yep. have you, uh, where it has evasion and it has 3 power for five, for 4 mana, rather, uh, and it fits into basically any red deck. I mean, it's, it's good early, it's good late, it's a fine creature. It's great evasion, and that's what red is always lacking, so it, it, it will see a lot more play than you would think if you don't have already played with this card. Absolutely. This card is terrific. Always play it in your limited decks. Blinding Flare, you know, 
I miss Falter. You know, Falter was a red and a colorless, all non-flying creatures can't block. Man, that was a great rate. Well, but this this is a better rate, I think, in this format because it triggers all your heroic too. That's what I was going to like. The only yeah. the, the only you know uh, upside to this is that you can say, okay, you know, my attackers can't block, but all their heroic is going to trigger. Yeah. Which and, is terrific. And that's a great place to be if you don't have a lot of ways to trigger or if you have multiple heroic guys and you just want ways to trigger all of them at the same time. Uh, and I like it with, uh, what's the uh, arena athlete? I like the, he can't block, <laughs> so you can't, can't block. Eh? Eh. We trade equally. Uh, Blinding Flare, a super cool card. We'll be able to both end games and give you a ton of awesome triggers. Uh, it is uncommon for a reason. Let's put it that way. Yep. Cyclops of Eternal Fury. I like this guy a lot. I think in uh, Limited, he's going to be terrific. Yeah, I mean, we've had, uh, what was it, for six mana, we had a 5-4 mm -hmm. that had haste on its own last season, and that was fine in a lot of decks. I think this card is just a strict upgrade. Sure. And at, when your whole team has haste, we've learned this from Hammer of Porphyros, that things change. The game just kind of revolves around, will he top deck a creature? Right. Like, you know, it's just so po powerful of an effect, and this card alone just is a 5-3 attacker, so like sometimes the the uh, the line's going to be clear and you're going to be able to get in that first crack. Sure, I mean, you know, the uh, the ability to, to again, get in with 5 immediately and then everything at thereafter, you know, giving creatures haste or creatures you control haste is very much sort of like time walking in a certain mm -hmm. way, where you're able to both play the thing and then be able to use the thing and not have to give them an entire turn to attack block, draw a card, decide if they want to play things. Well, I want to do this, I want to do that. Okay, now it's your turn. Okay, now I can do my stuff. This guy skips all of that and goes directly to the face button, the face bash. And you can see that in the art. Yes. <laughs> Super cool art. He's coming out of the crack, coming to get you. Yeah. Yeah, he's bringing crack power. Don't look at much of that. Dictate of the Twin Gods. Don't play this in Limited. Please don't. Please don't. You're, you're going. It's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt you more than you, it's going to hurt them. If this card is not winning the game when you play it, then it's, it's gonna probably bad, going yeah. to kick the crap out of you. Or you can play it at the end of turn, untap, and then have some crazy explosive turn. Right. Uh, I, I don't know if that's true. I, 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 it's a coin flip to me. Like, odds are it's not going to be good and limited, and odds are it's not going to be good and constructed, but I would not be surprised if it wasn't uh, situational in both. I could see it in constructed more so because you can help craft your game states in ways, but in limited, like it has literally, it has to win the game because if your opponent has anything or is able to turn the tables in any form or fashion, you're screwed. Like you're just screwing yourself at that point, and that's a very bad place to be. Yes. Don't do that. It's dangerous. Idolon of the Great Revel, awesome constructed card. Probably good limited card. You know, it's it's it needs to be on the curve, and you're you're going to be able to. Your opponent is not going to be playing that many spells that cost three or less in limited generally. Yep. Um, and if they are, they'll be able to take out a two two or whatever in the meantime. Now let's talk about constructed. Constructed is awesome. Yeah, this card is going to be really good. Uh, Ooh. I, Ooh. I think Ooh. it might have a home in the sideboard of a lot of the red aggressive decks because there's already a lot of options and you might just want to play it against decks with removal spells mm -hmm. so they're always taking damage from your card so it pseudo has haste. I would love to play this main deck. I think that's fine. I mean, it gets scary against other aggressive decks. Sure. Well, but also scary sometimes in a good way. Mm -hmm. I mean, even against mono black, you know, like, yes, if they don't have the thought seize, or if they have the thought seize, they're going to take the stupid thing. But if they don't, and you're able to get Island on the Great Rebel, and they're able to play anything they play thereafter, Pack Rat, Night Vol, Spectre, Heroes Downfall, whatever, it's just going to burn them. It's just going to hurt them. And, uh, and I'm happy to do that. Yeah, so I think that this card is going to be something to pick up. Uh, it's going to show its true power. I'm, I'm assuming just the first week uh, of opens in Cincinnati, correct? Mm -hmm. in, yep. And so we'll see, you know, day one of the release weekend, uh, what this card does. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to be playing it. Like every Legacy Burn player is high-fiving all over the place because Legacy Burn had such a bad matchup against Storm. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd have to either bring in Pyrostatic Pillars and hope you draw them, hope they get there. Oh, or that's right. This is just another card to make that Burn deck good. Yeah, it is going to be sweet. I love the Burn deck. I think it's sweet. I think it's way more difficult to play than people give it credit for. And it finally has a terrific tool to make those Storm decks be punished. It's true. This Punish. card is pretty good in, in, in Modern. Oh, it's going to be great in Modern again, again against Storm. Mm -hmm. any, any decks that want to play a bunch of spells all in one turn, particularly really cheap spells, here's your man. Yep. Very, very good card. I'm really excited about it. Uh, Flame Speaker's Will, I'm not very excited about. Just no. no, it's... There's not really any artifacts. No, I mean, this is to trigger Heroic. You know what I mean? Well, That's it is, all but, this is doing. but it's the same as the white one, and mostly you're going to be red-white Heroic. And mm -hmm. and when it, when it dies, uh, you know, like... 
you're forced to, or you may sacrifice it. Oh, I thought it was always a Yeah, force. you don't have to, and that's fine. You know, like, that's yeah. all this is going to be used for. This is in the Red, White, Heroic deck. You're looking for things to target your creatures. You know what I mean? There's just better options. There are, and but when you don't have those, this is what you're going to use. It's and pr probably going to be bad. That's about all I got for you. Uh, you know what's better than one, two, three Minotaur? Two, two, three Minotaurs? Mm, for five mana. And they have haste. Ooh. I mean, it's not Pretty a bad... Good, actually. A 4-6 for 5 is not a bad raid, but they're two individual creatures which make it worse than a 4-6. But uh, with the Minotaur Lords, would just needed more creatures to just swarm the board. I think this card is pretty good. Man, this is where you really want Tribal Sorceries back. Tribal oh, wow. Sorcery Minotaur. That's what you need. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because then the, the Rage Blood Shaman or whatever the Minotaur Lord makes would make one this less. cheaper. You know, that type of thing. Like, there's a lot of really cool Minotaur cards in here. And this is uh, this is definitely a hallmark that you'll want in your Minotaur deck. Oh, yeah, especially because not a lot of people are going to want this. But then if you end up getting the Lords later, it gets pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. I mean, that being said, it's on the same as the 4-3 the, the Lord or the 2-3 Haste, give plus 2 plus 0 Lord. Sure. Uh, but I still think that this card is going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be good regardless of whether or not you're in Minotaurs or have Minotaur Tribal anything. It's still a fine deck for any limited, uh, any limited deck you got. Still a fine option, rather. Uh, font of Ire. Nope. I just, I mean, all this makes me think of is, uh, what's the card? Uh, the basic land cycle. Fiery Temper, I think it was called. Yeah, I think it was. Or no, not Fiery Temper. It was something like that. Was Fiery Temper was the deal three damage. Oh, discard. that is yeah. that's the madness, madness. one. But it's that being fine. said, this card is probably the best of the cycle, but it's still not that exciting. But really? it's still it still might see play. This I would is, actually see the black one would be better than this one. No, because this one uh, kills creatures. Like you can play it on two if you don't have any drops, and then for four mana, it deals five damage later in the game. Uh, I mean, it triggers Constellation, I guess, and deals five later and stuff. Okay. It'll see more play than all the other ones. I can assure you that. I it mean, kills maybe, creatures. I think the blue one would see. It doesn't kill creatures. Oh, it's just player? Yeah. Oh, this card is awful. Yeah, this card is terrible. This card is so... I thought it was just I was creatures. Like, what do you thought? I was like, I know the green one's complete garbage. Yeah, Font of Iron is bad. Uh, I know the white one's even worse. I mean, but like this one, I was like, oh. oh. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I, I'm embarrassed now. It's bad. Forge Door Reads, not bad. Forge Door Reads is great. Awesome and limited. Super sweet. We'll see, like, we'll just do all the good things for you. We'll be able to ping things. You'll be able to play it after attacks. You'll be able to play it, like, more enchantment creatures I mean, later the, and, like, the, knock their dudes off. The great awesome. thing is when it's in play, you get to play this little mini game with your opponent when you attack a 2-2 two, two into a 3-3, three, three, and you're like, what you going to do? Yeah. Are you going to block? Because I might have an enchantment. I got it. It just gives red the ability to always represent a trick. Mm -hmm. So your opponent's always going to be nervous about what's going on in a game. So yeah. I'm a big fan of this card. This card is really good and limited. You pick it early, you pick it often, you will love it. Gluttonous Cyclops. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's just, it, mm. it doesn't, to me, it really doesn't feel like a magic card. Like the art looks like something from like a Facebook game. <laughs> the, uh, the art is interesting. Um, I'll, I'll take the sheep eater. Uh, you know, I, I don't have a problem with the art. I think the art is like both gross and ridiculous and awesome. <laughs> it's just very ridiculous. I mean, it is cool. And I mean, that eye though, that, like, he should get that checked out. Like, that thing is just kind of bulging and looks yeah. weird. And Dude. It looks like it hurts. Oh, man. Maybe it's infected. You know, we went a little far. <laughs> you know, we've gone a little far on a bad limited card. This is bad. Monster Cyclops is awesome. It's the four mana 3-3 three, three that turns into the 6-6 six, six Trampler. Tempered. Uh, is it Tempered Cyclops? Yeah, Tempered Cyclops. Tempered Cyclops, I'm sorry. Um, you know, and that's fine. It's just this this guy is, is all the wrong numbers, in my opinion, and not anywhere near good enough to invest six man into. No, the only cute thing is just, well, it's not even cute. It's kind of sad, but the, the falling sheep. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> Harness by force. Yeah. When awesome you, and limited. Awesome and limited. Um very good. I mean, we've already seen threat, threat and effects be good in this limited format, oh, which is scry, but like being able to take two guys on turn six, that's going to be lethal. Like You're going to kill people from this thing. Yeah, this this, this is going to be awesome. Um, <coughs> and it's it's just a strict upgrade in Constructed when you're in matchups where you want threat and effects, because if you ever flood out, you can just wait until this comes down on the, the last turn and kills them, because you're going to take two creatures. Like, stealing two creatures and attacking... Has to be better than one, right? I mean, I've oh. never taken two and still. Ah, I've never taken two at once. Never insurrection. I'm ready. I used to insurrection actually, like sacrifice all wow. my goblins to goblin prospector and insurrection their team. Wow. Well, that I never got thing. to do that. I came in right after onslaught. So, 
Yeah. So all I know is that you know not only does this have the potential to take two creatures, it literally it really does have the potential to take three and sealed, and you're just going to end the game. You're yep. just it's just the game is going to be like, oh, take your team, bye. Yeah, you're gonna play to this out or play to setting this card up so much and limited. It's mm -hmm. scary. Like this is a very good limited card. It is extremely awesome. Now, unfortunately, in standard, no. I think it'll be a fine cyborg card that in decks that want threat and effects. We just haven't seen one in a while. Right. I don't think we're going to see one for a while to come. Well, they've never been this good now, have they? Oh, now they haven't been this good. They haven't. Oh. I mean, I'm thinking about like a, a Red Devotion. Nykthos deck might want this card because when you take one creature, it doesn't do anything. So you have like the ability to have like nine mana in the mid game. That deck is all about building board stalls. And so it's just more Mizium orders, but they're better. Like they take a dragon and a Polkranos. Hey, c come on. get a, Come on. Come with me here. I can't! I've been burnt too many times by threatened things. There's been lots of threatened effects. There's been lots of little rifts on threatened effects, and they've all been bad and constructed. You can't convince me this time. Sorry. Well, this is the best one. Ooh, well, in that case. Knowledge and power. Crap and poop. And I just want you guys to know knowledge is power, oh. and this card is awful. <laughs> it's bad. This is that card you mentioned earlier with Patrick Scryfish, yeah. where if you're the only guy drafted in the knowledge and power, and you're the only guy getting those Scryfish. Let's be, let's be honest, you will be the only guy. <laughs> this card is real bad. It just, yeah, the fact you have to pay two more on top of it is such a dagger. Yeah, it's... Like, Really, you could have made it like one. I know they don't want to give zero. any of these. Well, they don't want to give any of these types of effects zero, because they found with um, uh, with Astral Slide that if you just give it to them for zero, they're going to find a broken one. You're going to break it somehow in some stupid way they can they didn't think about. So make it cost a mana. But two, uh, I guess that does make a sense of breaking things. But I also at the same time like, how can you scry multiple times? There's just like you can just. They could type in Scry, look at the 14 cards I, that have Scry that have ever been printed. I just recognize that they would rather put that safety check in there than have the possibility. Sure. You know, and I think that's, you know, that's a little hedge in their bets. And it's not anything you really if want you to take. You have an omniscience in play. Uh, you, uh, you know. Yeah, whatever. You just don't want that type of thing to take over any type of, any sure. type of format or something. Either way, they costed this thing out both in the ability, both in the cost. It's, man, for those who draft this deck, more power to you. I wish you nothing but luck. Rep. Lightning Diadem. Diadem? How do you say that? Diadem? Diadem? Dido? Diadem. Dido? Dido? White flag? What's want, white flag? I want to thank you. That's the name of her uh, album. Is her oh, okay. Um, <coughs> regardless, uh, you know, if you paid six mana for a... Plus two plus two? A shock? Plus two plus two shock. It's good, though. Don't get me wrong. It triggers heroic. It's going to kill probably something of theirs or go up to the dome. And it's going to be able to give a permanent boost. This isn't Terra bad. It's pretty Terra bad. It's pretty it bad. It's six not, mana. But it's not unplayable. That's what I'm trying to explain. It isn't unplayable. It's not unplayable. It's not something you want multiples of. It's not something you're going to pick early and limited by any means. But it's something you're not going to be completely unhappy with at the top of your curve with, you know, any of the creature, any of the sweet heroic creatures that you have in red and or white. It can hopefully just finish the game. That's the best thing that this card is going to do is hopefully just end the game. Yeah. And I can imagine, actually, that it will do so. Mm-hmm. Magma Spray, yay! Magma Spray's back, and 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 this card, you know, has a has a a very big part of my heart because Aww. it came out it came out for uh, my first Pro Tour. This was uh, Rise of Eldrazi, right? No, it was. Um, oh, was it back in Shards of Alar? Shards. It was the last oh, one. Oh yeah, it wasn't Shards, wasn't it? Came out in the third set. Yeah, and uh, I ended up playing four copies of this in my main deck. Um, wow. Yeah, I, I played my own rogue deck at my first Pro Tour, mm -hmm. and I played this card because I thought it was going to be very good. Um, and I absolutely just like blew out so many people with this card <laughs> uh, that they were expecting. It's like against Putrid Leeches, like the pump guy. They would like pump in response to Magma Spray, and they'd just be like, oh my god. <laughs> what? Yeah. Magma Spray is obviously going to do its best work probably in standard right now against Force of Resurgence. Um, maybe against stuff like, uh, you know, Elvish Mystic I mean, or whatever. I Mutal Vault, Xanthor Necromancer, like there's a lot of two-power creatures that sure. that this is an upgrade from um, Shock just for the fact that it exiles it. And that's that's important to be able to exile yeah. a creature. So, um, I agree. It's, I mean, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an excellent spell. It's limited removal. You're going to play it and limit it every single time. It's great there. It's great and constructed. Like, this is just a, an excellent card. Do not not play it in your limited decks. Yeah, it is very good. 
Mogus says, Warhound, what's up, doggy? Rawr, 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 rawr. He's like, rawr, 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 rawr. He's ugly. He's an ugly dog. Rawr. Yitchy. Rawr. I hope you are not a mailman. <laughs> yeah. Can bite both legs. Ooh, whoa, that's another head. That's freaky. But uh, <laughs> seriously, this card is awesome. It's great and limited, great and constructed. I think it is going to see some constructed play, mostly because it's such a cheap bestow, and you don't care if your guys die. Um, in the early turns, you're just trying to deal as much damage as possible. So mm -hmm. it pseudo, it, it gives itself haste pseudo on turn three. Sure. But in the same sense, it gets your small guys over coursers and Sylvan Caryatids and things like that. Uh, so I think that this card is going to get played because it also uh, gets played off Burning Tramissary. Right, because basically, you know, and and it's sort of the way that I've I've described some of the uh, some of the bestow cards in the Magic Show where I've explained where it's like basically a split card. You know, it's a two mana two two that has to attack every turn, or it's a three mana plus two plus two and it makes the guy attack every turn. Both of those are great options, but when one option literally leads into the other option, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. It's great when it's good bestowed and good not bestowed, like fine on the curve, but better when you get to bestow it. Then this is an excellent Magic card. Enjoy it. Pensive Minotaur, he's... What is that face? He's pensive. He's thinking. That's how Minotaur... No, he's eating. What he's is eating he a leg. He's eating a leg? Okay. He's just he's just literally eating a human leg. What is... Gamp... Oh, We're God. We're first thinking that he might be lost in thought, but no, he's just gnawing on some Now, he, well, he's lost in gnaw, yeah. I guess. And uh, I just can't... It, I think the picture is silly. Obviously, this is Herloon Minotaur uh, at a red and two versus two red and one. Okay, or, it's a better Harleen Minotaur. Or the the black one from yeah, Feline. Felhide, Felhide, Mavis. Felhide Minotaur. Because we got to remember they're, all the Minotaur and words. Then, yeah, I I don't really like that. There's so many now that this is just a inferior version of a common Minotaur from um, Born of the Gods. Mm -hmm. Like there's just it's a strict upgrade in Born of the Gods. It it just got worse. And 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 I feel like they could have made a two mana two three or something just to change it up a little for the Minotaurs. Like, the Minotaurs are all just the same in the set. Like, there's no flavor to them. I feel like Minotaurs there's, design themselves. I, well, what, right, I think their, their flavor, at least what they try to do right now, is they're all two threes, and they kind of sort of help each other out. I mean, they're not going to take over goblins, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I don't think Wizards wants them to take over goblins, and I don't think none of us want them to take over goblins, but you want them to be like, well, I think you want them to be like the, the secondary, you know? There's still a tribe that you can talk to and work with, but not... Not so much. Not not pensive and not with that face. Ooh. Prophetic flame speaker. Oh, here's a big one. I mean, good or bad. I can't actually tell you because I have such polarizing arguments for both sides. Like, if you sat down and you're like, you're going to hype this card. I'm like, all right. I have no, I know exactly what I'm going to say and I believe it. And you're like, you're going to talk this card down. I'm like, that's all right. I know, I know exactly, exactly what I'm going to say, say yep. and I believe it. All right, so, but let's get this out of the way. This thing is the bomb diggity snip snap sack. In limited, like this card is sweet and limited. It is crushingly wonderful. Bestow anything on this, any pump spell, like it's a house. You have to deal yeah. with this, and it's gross. But if you can, if you can. But in constructed, that's when things get weird. Yeah, I mean, I, I like to look back at like Tom Ross red decks where they have Titan Strength and mm -hmm. Gorkland Rampager and a lot of pump effects that make this guy really good. But in the same time. I don't know if that's what mono red decks want. I mean, you don't really get to spray the boards, and if they deal with this, then the other cards are not are a little lackluster. But I do feel like maybe there's just a, a red splash white or white red in the middle, like hyper-aggressive deck running enough pump spells, but then there's not enough pump spells. Like You know, there's one of the things, like there's a few, there's a few times when I'm like, man, I'm glad Wizards didn't give me that preview card. This is it. <laughs> because you just didn't know what to say. Because about I don't know what to say. I, mean, I think I have been burnt in few ways that people were burnt over Warren Instigator. Uh, you could even say it's one of my most famous misfires of all time. No, that was Spectral Procession by far. All right, fine. By three far. Three dudes, seriously. But regardless, Prophetic Flame Speaker is probably pretty good. Now, your issues against it is that every removal spell is probably going to kill it. Yeah, it just it just is what it is. Which but, we've learned that that's not a good argument for magic cards, right? You know, basically, you know, when when Bane Slayer came out, you and M10, everybody's like, brr, brr, just dies Doomblade, and like, well, okay, and but proceeds one, to run standard. But for one lucky weekend, mine didn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for one Bradley J. But seriously, I actually think you know, while in the magic show, I kind of erred on the uh, on the safe side. The safe side is to say, for any magic card, that they're all terrible. Because when they're all good, you look like, oh, well, it was better than I expected, blah, blah, blah. But when you're like, this card is awesome, and it turns out to be crap, well, then you look way worse. So I think a lot of people are erring on the side of it's bad. 
because I, it's safe. I'm going to take my spots. Like, I don't like living on that with, with magic cards. Like I don't like you either. I, I mean, I don't. I just, if I think a card is awesome, I'm going to work with it and I'm going to build it and I'll just say I'm wrong. Like, you know, Trading Post, ho Crater Hoof. Like, mm. Crater Hoof actually was pretty good. Crater Hoof finally got there, but not yeah. in the right format that you were thinking of. Well, I got him there in Standard. He was he was a main player for a while. Yeah, he was a dude. Yeah, it happened. So what about this guy? Uh, I think that it has potential. I just don't know which deck. Don't and give me as potential. Come on, man. Good or bad? Uh, it's going to be a format defining card. I think the red decks are just going to evolve to be around this guy, but I don't know how they're going to be built yet. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to be built with burn. Like another deck idea that I had was uh, a black red deck with this as more mm -hmm. of a card engine, like played alongside Chandra and removal spells mm -hmm. and just played as a guy, not like your engine. Like he is just a 1 3 trample. You might have some ways to make him better, mm -hmm. but for the most part, he's just there to get around creatures. Like he, pl he trades or he. He plays well with a lot of early creatures, mm -hmm. um, and so and the three threes you just have to deal with. Sure, I mean you know I think he probably needs help. Yes, he dies to lots of things, but his upside is so high. Uh, yeah, I think his upside is playing with removal spells. So then like, it's scary to get hit by him. Sure. Um, whereas when you have pump spells, your opponent's going to play scared. They're going to kill him. But when you're not playing pump spells, they're going to want to build their board position. Um, because you're a, you're playing higher end spells like bigger monsters, so you can't they can't take the time to kill them all the time. One of the things that actually tipped me off about this card was that it was previewed by uh, David Humphreys on the Mothership, and talking about the development of the set and why this card does what it does and the numbers that it has and the way it would fit into the metagame and yada yada, which makes me think it's better. You know, that it's not bad and that it's you know it wasn't just sort of dumped out there. It wasn't some like crappy red mythic that does something ridiculous or whatever world fire or whatever. Um, you know, I think this is one of those sort of surgical cuts to say, like, this is what red decks need. They need a good three drop. They need a good thing to be able to enable uh, or they need to be uh, to blood rush or to pump or what have you. And when you do so, it's an incredible advantage that is hard to stop. Yeah. The funny thing is I got hopeful dyslexia when I first saw this card and thought it was a 3-1. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so they tempered it a little bit. But actually, you know, while I aired on safety in the show, you know, I'm, I'm going to go. You know what? I think the card's really terrific. I played Titan Strength before. I think I think that that card has potential. Excellent. Now, Riddle of Lightning hasn't been seen around since Future Side. Future Side? Yep. Wow. So it's been the a while. The last time we scryed. Unbelievable. Such scries so long ago. Riddle mm -hmm. of Lightning is an excellent spell, it, it, particularly because it's an instant. A, uh, B lets you see the top three cards rearrange them how you want. And C, of course, you get to do a whole bunch of damage, and ideally yeah. a lot of damage if you're in red green aggro. Or at the very worst, you know, you're probably going to have some sweet expensive cyclopses or something. Yeah, I mean, it's just a burn spell that lets you set up your next turn. It's a huge tempo swing where you spend, uh, you know, a turn where you probably don't have any more creatures mm -hmm. to deal with one of theirs, but then set up to make sure that you have something to play next turn. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's just a huge uh, tempo swing in limited, and why this card will have potential. Granted, back then, the creatures didn't get so big. Sure. And, uh, But the great thing about Riddle of Lightning to me is this little game where if I lightning strike your creature, you are going to play a pump spell on it to save it sometimes. Mm -hmm. But if I Riddle of Lightning it, there's a tension. Maybe they can't find a card to kill it. Maybe a whiff. Uh, if I play the pump spell, then he, then he might not be able to kill it, or if you can already kill it. like It's just this weird tension that like you'll see people tanking against Riddle of Lightning way more against you as opposed to like Lightning Strikes. Well, I mean, the same goes even for yourself. Like mm -hmm. when, you, when you play Riddle of Lightning, you don't get to see what you're going to reveal before you target Unless something. Unless you already know. Unless you already know from a previous scry or something, which is great. But let's just say in the real world where some of us live, I don't live. Where you don't set time. up your spells to give you the most advantage. Well, you is would that, like is that to. Your real world. Oh, is that your real world? Is yeah. that what you want to do? <laughs> Suck. Is that what you want to do? <laughs> no, but seriously, like one of the things that actually was interesting back when Real of Lightning was in Future Sight, uh, or was in Time Spiral Block, or what have you, was the uh, was the unknown. You know, you would play Real of Light, and you'd be like. I think I want to target your four toughness guy, but you know, when you look at it and you only see like, you know, three mana cost and like one one, and you're like, oh God, you know, and then you have to put the three on the bottom and hope you reveal the, oh, it's a yeah. land and you're terrible. It, it, it's an like, instant, and that's why you do it right when they attack before you block it. That's usually <laughs> why I cast this spell. Is that really lightning their biggest guy, hoping to kill, but if I couldn't, I'd just throw a bear in front now, of it. Now, I'm not saying don't play it. You should always play it. It's a terrific spell. It's going to deal a ton of damage a lot of the time. I'm just saying that there is going to be times where you're, 
you're not going to be 100% whether you have four damage or four converted mana costs in the top yeah. three cards of your deck. I actually would say don't play it every time. In, like You don't want it to be at the top of your curve mm -hmm. uh, because the top of your curve is where you want to make your guys bigger or uh, or get their guys out of the way, but sure. you're not going to be able to do that when all your spells cost a little. But if you have a mid rangey deck and more uh, four, five, and six drops, this card is going to be good. Yeah, yeah, and the big red, or I'm sorry, the the, the big green or the big black cards mm -hmm. uh, are all working really well with this. The red, white aggro decks, you know, you're going to, by definition, look at like ones and twos or something, and you'll be like, oh, I paid five mana for a shock. Yeah, especially how this format is designed, where the cards cost less and the bestows cost more. Mm -hmm. So the converted mana costs are theoretically lower in the set, yep. even though the curves are higher. Yeah, it's it's... It's an interesting card. It's very. Mm -hmm. It's it's not uh, clean cut on how good it is. Now, Rollick of Abandon is sweet. I think it's, it's just going to wreck all the non Minotaur decks. And that and that's really what this is for. It's like this is the Minotaur card. Like th there's a reason why you get that extra toughness. Is you just get a bunch of four ones to kill them. So yep. uh, this is your Minotaur Lord. Like you pick this up, <laughs> assuming that this is your Minotaur Lord. Yeah, assuming this is going to make all your Minotaurs awesome. This is in your black red Minotaur deck. That's where it's going to work best. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. it's still going to work in all of your other decks um, that that can use it, but it's never going to work as well than if you keep playing two threes. Yep. And there ain't no two three like a Minotaur two three. Now, rouse the mob. Okay, I mean this is the sure. blowout card for red. Strive. Yeah, and, and you get trample. That's great. That's um, good. I mean, I have been uh, burned by the other ones in other sets. Like, there's a lot. Like, uh, there was the overlord that gave uh, overload that gave mm. plus two plus zero to everything. It didn't give trample, but it gave it to everything for three mana. Sure. And this card just yes, there's heroic, but. It just doesn't have that oomph that I want. I mean, that's what it was for. You know what I mean? Like, they yeah. did it, obviously, for Heroic. It's great that it gives it Trample, which is sweet. Um, you know, this is the, they blocked all your dudes and you won't blow them out. This is, they didn't block all your dudes and you won't blow them out. Or this is, I need a bunch of Heroic triggers and this is the only thing I've got. Mm -hmm. It's it's very versatile. It's not one you want to play in infinite multiples or anything. Um, or you want to draft a whole bunch of copies. But it is certainly a terrific spell in the red-white Heroic deck. Yep. Satter Hoplite, a terrific, terrific limited card. One of the best in the set. In, yeah. In, I mean, in red. We've already seen how Favorite Hoplite was such a first pickable card mm -hmm. back in Theros Block, and now red gets one. So this is your setup card. This is the card that you're going to want to get a lot of uh, in pack one. Try to be the red drafter, because then if you're the red drafter um, and setting up real early, that means you get all the Dragon Mantles, and, mm. and those are like some of the most important cards for these decks. And the Rolliker uh, and stuff like that. Yeah, especially yeah. since this is, yeah, this is a 1-1 one, one Heroic guy, so you can like Rolliker this on turn two and attack with a 3-3 three, three on mm. turn two. That, those are super powerful draws, and we've already seen that you just want more one drops for when you get the Ordeals and mm. when you get the, uh, the pump effects on turn two and three, and this will just be your army in a can. So Absolutely. This card is one of those where it looks a little innocuous, but I assure you it is a powerhouse when it gets going. Yeah, we can just tell by favorite hoplite. Wee! Sigil Skank. What's up, Skank? Uh, Sigil Skank! I, I kind of like this card for the fact that it lets oh, you I love and this keep card attacking. in Limited. Oh, yeah. it's great. Like, what do you want to do more th with a red deck in Limited than to just turn them sideways? Yeah, and, and get to manipulate your deck, the thing that you're always lacking. Mm -hmm. Which red really doesn't get. Red green doesn't really have it. Red white doesn't really have it. And, and there's a lot of times that if you miss a draw step on that pivotal turn, you're, mm -hmm. you're just done. Absolutely. And this guy just keeps you going. He's perfect on the curve. He's just basically incremental advantage. He doesn't need to give you scry one to honestly be playable in the types of decks that this co that this card goes into. Yep. Spawn of Thraxes. So Thraxes? Hey, Thraxes. You mean, good. It's really good. It's a bomb rare. I mean, there's. I don't think there's any other way to explain it. Like, in limited, slam dunk. Like, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be even better in sealed than in draft, but you're still going to play it. It's a freaking dragon that deals damage when it enters the battlefield to kill their best thing or just nug them so you kill them next turn. I wonder if they need the flavor text because I do really feel that uh, this card should have been spray damage. Should have been able to deal damage divided equally or divided. Mm -hmm. I mean, it should. It's a dragon. It's flying. Yeah, it, it should. Fire. You know, because you know, what's a blowout without a bigger blowout? It's not that much of a bigger blowout. It's just a better option. It's a bigger blowout. Like when they got a bunch of X ones, and you're just like, brrr, like get thraxed, yo. It costs seven mana, and it's so? a dragon. Dragons it's a should do awesome things. It's already doing awesome things. No, it's just like it jumps into play and just breathes fire on one. Oh, thing. now it's just jumping into play. And just Spider Mogus, if it could hit players. And or creatures, it would be amazing. Yeah, because it can't hit the players, and especially that's not a Mogus ability thing. Like Mogus is always 
like dealing damage to players and stuff like that. So, right again, if that had been the way of it, it'd probably been even a modern card at that point. You know, you would have seen, you'd have seen it in stuff like Storm or whatever, just to kill you with it. Mm -hmm. You know, or whatever, just like ridiculous stuff. Um, and so it went from like, oh my god, that thing could be a oh. it's spread, but. Way worse. Yeah, it's like it's Scred was a format-defining card, and if this were player two, it, it has the potential mm -hmm. um, to let you play a blue-red or blue-red-white, you know, spell-heavy deck, burn-heavy deck, uh, and be able to get there with a card like Spidemogus. But as a result, not much with just creatures. Yep. And even limited, it's not very good because if it's in your opening hand, it completely stinks. And later on, you might deal two, maybe three damage with it, but that only depends if you have enough spells to power it. Yeah, the only benefit to this card is Mogus does not, in fact, look like a dancing butt. Oh, great. No dancing butts. Awesome. <laughs> Starfall is a terrific limited card, is amazing. Uh, you know, if that creature is an enchantment, then you get Barb Lightning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'll uh, take it. Was Barb Lightning just a creature and a player? Oh, uh, yeah. Barb Lightning was in Twine, but yeah. it was, I believe it was a sorcery speed, yeah. as I recall. Um, so this is instant, which is great, and if it's an enchantment creature, then it's full-blown Barb Lightning. Yep. Um, and it's just a terrific removal spell. It's one of the best. Yeah, I think this card will see a lot of play, but it does cost five mana. We've already seen that, like, Lash of the Whip has seen a periodic play. I mean, let's be honest, like... This card's way better than Lash of the Whip. I like, don't agree. This card, well, I don't know about way better, but it's definitely it's definitely as good in my opinion because it's what the red deck wants to do. Both Still some damage. Kill the thing and hit your face. That's, yep. that's what it's looking to do. Yeah, I, I just have an issue with five mana removal that doesn't just kill a thing because we've just seen uh, the Perforosa's removal spell along with Lash of the Whip, and both of them uh, did not see as much play as I expected. And, and I don't know if the format's going to slow down. It could very well slow down. Sure. Um, because there's less ordeals. Less there's also a lot of high things. toughness stuff in here. I yep. mean, you know, you see like, even sort of every single color has a lot of high toughness things. The the one mana 04 that has heroic and white. I mean, you know, all the blue 24s. I mean, I think the biggest thing is there's less uh, ordeals. Like, there's there's just only one pack instead of, like, three or two of them. Right. And that's a huge thing because ordeals were just, like, such a huge part of the metagame that now there's only one pack of those. So maybe the games develop more in the normal sense as opposed to back when it was just build your army quick because the guys got so big so fast. Right. But Starfall still, limited all-star, nothing constructed. Twin Flame. Interesting. Sweet. I don't, sweet design. I love the design of it. Yeah, it is a sweet a sweet design. It just means that you can copy a bunch of creatures that you have in play. Um, and, and the great thing that I like about this card is you can't make the same one, so they all just get a copy. Well, that's actually what I thought was kind of bad about it. Was that well, no, that, that makes it worse. But like I feel like there could be like, it would be really gross if you could just make the same card. And all I would do, like this card would be busted if you could do that. You would just play Red Devotion. And if you ever got a, uh, uh, what's the Mogus guy, the 4-2 that deals damage when it comes to play with Devotion? Oh, the Fanatica Mogus? Yeah, Fanatica Mogus. You just like make seven Whee! mana, make three of them your dad. That's awesome. That's boring. I know, a little boring. But ultimately it's the, the thing that kind of holds it back is the thing that kind of makes it interesting. Mm. So... You know, it's neat in that way. I like the art. I think the art is cool and sort of really flavorfully explains what's happening. Yeah. As you get a mirror image of yourself, uh, you know, made a fire because, and then it'll dissipate. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. great design, super cool. I think it's neat. It's going to be really good and limited, if nothing else, just to give you extra copies of maybe all of your devotion creatures. Yeah. You know, if you have a gray merchant and you got a twin flame, yeah. I mean, that's that's, that's good times. That's a little overkill, but yeah. No, no such thing as overkill. There's just kill. Kill. Or be killed, and yeah. we're going to use copies of ourselves to kill them. Yeah. What would you do with your own personal fire copy of yourself? Woo! I don't know. Play Parcheesi. <laughs> Wildfire Cerberus. Uh, for five mana, he's a 4-3, and he tries to wipe your opponent's board a couple turns thereafter. Maybe. Two damage is a little weak by the time you get to that level yeah. in the game. I mean, this card is such a mirror image of the Stonebreaker Goliath or Stonebreaker Giant or whatever. Stonebreaker called. Giant, yeah. Yeah, and whereas that card just killed you once you hit eight mana. Yeah. Um, and it was a 5-4, and this is uh, one less mana to, to monstrous, but I still don't think it's as as backbreaking as that guy. Right, and to just and this just turns into a 5-4. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, okay, I guess it kind of pseudo does seven damage by itself-ish. But uh, arguably just a mediocre card. Like, mm -hmm. not really in the rush decks, not really in the slow monstrous decks either. Uh, just not that good at all, honestly. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I don't, I don't think this card is going to be that something that I'm going to be excited to play. 
Desperate Stand. You know, the most interesting thing about this card to me was that it gave him Vigilance. And I was like, was that really necessary? Well, I mean, it's Sorcery, so you just play it on your turn. Well, yeah. You have to play it during your main phase one. And, I mean, giving plus two, plus zero in uh, First Strike for only two mana each guy yeah. is pretty sweet in a red-white Devotion deck. And It's very powerful. Don't get me wrong. I know it's powerful. I like it a lot. It was one of those, like... You know, does it really need to be sorcery speed when all these other amazing Strive blowout cards are instants? And the other half was like Vigilance was seriously necessary? I mean, Vigilance is, I, I think, one of the most, uh, this is the best set or block for Vigilance. I think when the creatures have Vigilance, they make them so much better. Sure. Because you're building that battleship and now it gets to block. And, and, and attacking and blocking is so important mm -hmm. um, that like... Vigilance, I think, is just one of the better abilities. I think it's way better than Trample. Mm -hmm. um, oh, wow. Way better? Well, you don't block in this format anyway. A uh, few people do. And, uh, you know, this isn't the right colors to be able to target multiple guys, give them lots of bonuses. Mm -hmm. I mean, we even saw the, uh, the first card we looked at, the uh, Crowen, uh, whatever, the uh, Crowen... Football player guy. Oh, the football, yeah. Yeah, the football player guy is what we'll call him. Uh, a crow and line breaker. Yes, line breaker. And Thank I only you. know that because I went to linebacker. Uh, yeah, <laughs> see? So, you know, that guy would be a 6 1 yeah. with vigilance, you know, and intimidate. Pretty sweet. And so. first strike. Yeah, so this isn't a card, you know, obviously this is a card that, you know, if you want to be red, white, devo if you want to be red, white, heroic, this is your jam. But. You might not necessarily be picking it very early, and it could also come around late because not everybody else wants to be in red, white, heroic. And, and that's the benefit. It's it's one of those cards that no one's going to like really want or need. But if you're already in red, white, you're going to see it late, and then you're going to take it because it does have a decent effect. I, I, it's not as powerful as it could be, but I'm pretty sure that this is the kind of card that they they played around with a lot because of how unique it looks. Sure, it's a neat one. It's a cool card. A rowist got a kick in the crap out of you. Yeah, I, the, when I saw this card, it was one of the first cards that spoiled, and I was just like, wow. What? Like, I don't know how good it's going to be, but its abilities are extremely relevant, and I'm pretty sure that none of us have been really looking towards White Weenie, Splash, and Red for Boar's Charm in this, and that's where a lot of people should be going. Like, I just think, like, going, dude, 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 playing this, attacking with your guys, they can't block them, but your guys are smaller than there's anyway, but some of those oh. guys are going to be Precinct Captains, so they either double block the Precinct Captain and take other creatures, and your guy doesn't die, or you get a blocker the next turn. So I think White Weenie with, with like, a couple of this guy could be very good. And I think the other way, I think Mono Red with a splash of white for this you're guy and Boros Charm. No, you're trying to burn them out in that deck. Like, why am I going to burn them out? 7 4. Hammer Dem Perforos. I, 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 hammer. Get, I get your point. Hammer, hammer. Dude, it's hammer time. No, it's hammer into want, a rose in the no, kitchen. No, you want you can't do that. Yes, you're you gonna, can. You're gonna play actually let hammer into Perforos and it's turned on. It's not turned on at that point. No, no, no. That's when you play fire drinker Slater into Ashdale and the hammer into a Rose. Oh, we're playing one drops now, too. Of course we are. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't it be Cackler? Okay, Cackler. Cackler into Ashdale and into Thermo Hammer Perforos into this guy. No. <laughs> Don't do that. No, but seriously, this guy, 7-4, 7-4. Seven four, seven four. Wow, 7-4. Yeah, I, I think this is I one can't of, believe this that. could be a sleeper. I don't know where it's ever priced at, but it, I do feel like there's going to be a week where we all just go, oh, oh that's what you do with it. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, oh wow. wow. Yeah, we're going to just show the world the O-face. Just, oh, oh, because Roas is amazing. Someone's just going to crush an open with this card, and we're going to be like, ah. Please crush opens with this card. I want to see it. I need to see it on the battlefield doing damage. Armory of Aroas. Speaking of Aroas. So so what I get out of this. Mm, what you get out of it? Is mm. you get more armor as you go to more battles. I mean, that's what it feels like. It's kind of like, go fight sure. them, and you're like, what do I get? And it's like, I don't know. We'll figure it out once you attack. And like, here's your second helmet. And you're like, all right, whatever. You know, <laughs> next time, like, here's your extra shoulder pad. All right, okay, sure, whatever. Yeah. You know, it, it adds up over time. I think that in limited, this could add, add up pretty quickly. What do you think? Um, yeah. In I mean, limited good, limited bad? Like, no, I feel limited. Bad. I feel it's limited Good because it's we're able mana. to. Give I'd rather pay, pay four mana to bestow, and I'd rather have a bestow creature in my deck as opposed to this. And it's only good to, uh, aggressively, so it doesn't do anything for four mana if you want to block. Yeah, whereas but think a bestow about, creature does. I get. I mean, yes, it wants to actually like that flavor a lot, is that it's making you attack to trigger it. It's making you attack to get the bonuses. But anything with evasion is going to just get bigger and scarier if they can't stop it soon. We've seen that ability back in Innistrad block, and they were relevant-ish, but not in limited. And I don't think getting a plus one plus one. I mean, I like that it's. It gets the bonus before it deals the damage. Sure. Um, but in the same sense, it's an equipment that costs four mana to turn on, and I don't really know if that's what this format's after, especially when there's so many like 
tempo based cards that I don't want to invest into like too many of these effects. I'd rather either play another creature or bestow or something. I want to err on the side that this is pretty sweet. And I'm going to err on the side that this is unplayable. Okay. Well, good luck out there. Mana Confluence. I'm speaking still going to of... err on the side that this is un... No, I'm kidding. What? <laughs> best card in the set. Oh, Lord. Best card in the set. Not close. Thanks, Wizards. You're just like, it's one of those things in spoiler season where we're like, man, these spoilers are sweet. This set's really awesome. This is really cool. And then they're like, oh, yeah, City of Brass. And everyone's like, Pfft. I mean, I do have some things to say about this in the sense that they're negative, but not in the same way. I did it on Above the Curve, and everyone took it, like, the wrong way. And they're like, you think this card's bad? I'm like, no. I just don't think it's the new Messiah. It's not, like, the best card we're ever going to see ever, and it's going to change magic forever. It's not going to change magic forever, but it is going to fix the mana problems that the format has essentially been dealing with. And they, that Wizards specifically, I think, sort of geared it towards. They wanted to make uh, multicolor aggro decks difficult, and therefore mono blue devotion, mono black devotion, yada, yada, because you couldn't really splash very well. Now you have all your scry lands, and you have mana con influence and you can able you can really punt, punish those who are trying to do so much with all of these wacky lands for example uh, where in the world is burning earth and standard would someone please god play burning earth play it main because you are going to wreck people's face with that card it's unbelievable but you know the mono red decks wanted to be able to splash boros charm they want to be able to splash heroics they want to be able to splash any other random thing even you know launch the fleet or whatever mm -hmm. if you want to do something like that and this is the spell they were waiting for because now you can run the four shot and the four mana confluence and actually splash a color and not worry about a stupid come in to play tap land. I agree. And you still only play a couple tap lands, though, because you still want like 10 sources for more than... Uh, if you're playing more than four cards splashing, you want to, like 10 sources. Sure. But uh, the, the, the issue I have with this is don't think that this opens a lot of doors because it actually constricts a lot of doors. This existing is actually going to stop people from wanting to play cards. Like, I've seen people building um, Prime Speaker's Agana decks and, and trying to do big, awesome things with this card, but you really can't because uh, you're not only taking damage, but the aggressive decks are getting more streamlined, so it's going to be a more aggressive format. You're going to want cards like, like I think, Bremaz, Loxon Smiter, and Boris mm -hmm. Walker all get better, like just these three drops that hold the four. Sure. And so I, I want to play four in decks that either can gain life and get back that um, life loss, or are just super aggressive. Like I, I'm pretty sure that this card is going to make Brave Naya a real thing in standard. Mm -hmm. And just because I thought that, that that deck was awesome, but the problem was I would I would sometimes have tap line, tap line, shock line draws, and they were just not good enough. Yeah, the mana was just bad. But you know, basically, I think it, what doors it does open are for fast aggro decks or fast two color decks, but not the slow tri color decks, not the slow two color decks. Like I don't, you're just not, you're not going to want this type of effect if you're in a control shell or you're in even almost a mm -hmm. mid range shell, depending on what it is you're doing. But you know, the fact that this reaches all the way back into Legacy, where instead of running. Uh, uh, Tarnished Citadel, you're going to be able to run this. Instead of running Gemstone Mine, you can run this. For City of Brass, obviously, you can run this and not get hit by Rashad and Port. Uh, this is, to me, it was a, a terrific surprise. I did not see this coming at all. I loved it. I thought it was great. It's terrific design. Way to go, Wizards. And, and this could open up new pathways for like unique decks in like um, modern playing for City of Brass for Mana Confluence if there's like a deck out there that can do that. Sure. So, you know, it doesn't open all the doors because love is an open door, as it were. Thanks, Frozen. Aww. Aww. But the door is closing on the red set review for Journey into Nyx. And I want to thank you guys for watching. I'm Evan Irwin. I'm Brad Nelson. And we're tapping those cards. So you don't have to. See you tomorrow. Goodbye.